Hey everyone, welcome to the Bruce Williams channel. I'm glad you tuned in today. Thank you very much. In this video, I'd like to talk about a recent release from Seiko that I'm particularly excited about as a Seiko fan, as a Seiko path. I know I'm not alone, but it's kind of a divisive release because I think Seiko has done some nice things. They're listening to the market. They're doing some, uh, some elements that aren't super common from this brand, but at the same time, it's coming in at a retail price that's higher than what we would like to see and what we would like to spend as watch enthusiasts. So I think the reception is fairly divided. And unfortunately, I don't have you know the different dial colors here uh, to show you in person. It's being released this month and they're just starting to trickle out in to the authorized dealers for the first time I saw one posted, a picture posted in the wild, so to speak, on a Seiko Facebook group, a black dial, and it looked really good. Uh, so I hope to have them in hand within the next month, maybe maybe a couple months, just depending on when they hit the market and uh, which authorized dealer uh, can lend it in. I've been talking to Brent L. Miller and uh, they'd like to lend in these watches. So I don't have them in hand, but we're going to drop in pictures and videos and we're going to talk about this release, what they've done good. And we're going to talk about the things that us watch enthusiasts like to complain about. There's nothing wrong in doing that. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. So let's start with the things that I think Seiko has kind of listened to the market uh, in regards to. And one is I know a lot of watch enthusiasts, we want to see smaller watches, sub 40 millimeter watches anywhere, you know, 36, 37, 38, 39. There aren't a ton on the market. There's not a ton from Seiko. You know, it's not unheard of that they produce them, but it's nice to see you know, some of the more traditional sizes being done. We're not seeing dress watches at 41, 42 millimeter, which can look a little bit comical and disproportionate in my opinion. This one, let me reference my notes here, is being advertised at 37 millimeters with a 43.6 millimeter lug to lug and a, a lug width of 19 millimeters. So that is, that's a little bit annoying, that 19. I'm sure it looks proportional, but... You know, if you have a vast collection of 20 millimeter straps or, you know, 22, 18, most people have even sized lug widths with their watches. You're going to be out of luck in terms of wanting to accessorize with straps you already have in your uh, watch collection. So 19 millimeters is the lug width. And they're saying, um, they're saying 12.1 in overall height, but I'm not sure if that's counting the box sapphire crystal that carries inner anti-reflective treatment. Uh, I'm guessing not, but it looks good, doesn't it? And I like the fact that we have color options here. We have black in Sunray. We have brown in Sunray. We have uh, what looks to be white in Sunray and then a vertically brushed silver dial. And what I think could be the most exciting, a Sunray done in burgundy, which is an uncommon color when it comes to watch brands. And the fact that Seiko is so good at their dial work and uh, with their case finishing and with creating an original design that's practical and comfortable and easy to wear, makes you excited to wear. You know, I think the things that we like about Seiko are present with this watch when it comes to the finish work, the angular case, the design that's inspired by uh, the 1965 KSK King Seiko, uh, you know, very angular, uh, faceted markers, good dial work. Uh, they did reissue that watch watch, I believe last year or a year and a half ago. And it, it was nice, but again, it was a lot more expensive than this one. It carried a nicer movement and I think it sold fairly well for a limited edition, but I don't know. I'm, I'm more uh, excited about the fact that we have a non-limited edition and it has a bracelet and it's closer to the original size uh, at 37 millimeters. And I mean, we get the dial colors, we get strap options. There's a strap simulator on Seiko's website. Uh, so I think there are some good things at play here. Now, another thing that us watch enthusiasts have complained about when it comes to Seiko is the fact that their bracelets, yeah, they're comfortable, they get the job done, but they leave something to be desired in terms of satisfaction on wrist. In fact, Seiko, they seem to take a bracelet design and then they just put it on, you know, five different models. They do it with, with Grand Seiko. They do it with Seiko in terms of prospects and presage. And they have just a push button release clasp, not the best, not great adjustability. Um, and so 
we want to see nicer bracelets from Seiko. And I look at this King Seiko and I get excited as a bracelet fan because the design matches the angular nature of the case, the faceted markers, and I think it looks really good. You know, it seems that they paid some attention in making a bracelet that really feels like it matches and is specific to the watch case and not just one that they put a different end link in and, you know, pump into the next model. This looks specific to the King Seiko and it doesn't have that push button release clasp. This one comes with a well-machined thick butterfly clasp. Now, again, it's not going to have amazing adjustability, uh, but I think we can get a pretty decent fit just due to the length of these lengths. And I like the, I like the layout. This looks compelling to me. It looks like Seiko has really paid attention to doing, you know, not only what they do really well, but coming in with a more traditional size, coming in with more dial colors and strap options, and then coming in with an upgraded bracelet that seems to be pretty killer. So I'm looking forward to that. Now let's talk about the things that we like to complain about. One is price and two is specs. So let's talk about the movement. We have a 6R31 movement here, which I like the fact that there's no date. You know, I know a date's helpful for a daily driver, uh, but the fact that this has beautiful symmetry on these dial colors, these options, I think is a good move. So the 6R31 is based off of the 6R35, just without the date complication. We have a new logo in the crown, a King Seiko emblem. It's also found on the case back. And I like the fact that we have a closed case back because the 6R31 is nothing that you want to look at. I mean, it's not a beautiful movement. And whenever I see a movement or I want to see a movement, it's because it has nice architecture. It has good finish work. Uh, I like to see the heartbeat of the balance and the escapement. Uh, you know, I want to see the bridges. I want to see the jewels. I want to see the text. Uh, but with the 6R31, I don't want to see that. <laughs> so I'm glad it has a closed case back. But here's the kicker. It has an acceptable daily deviation rate of plus 25 seconds to, I believe, minus 10 or minus 15. Regardless, it's a wide range. And when you're spending $1,700 or a little bit under if you can get a discount from an authorized dealer, you want something far tighter in terms of tolerance than that. When we compare it to the King Seiko reissue from a year and a half ago, that one had the 6L, which is a nicer movement. It's also nicer finished. You couldn't see it through an exhibition window, but they have done watches where you can see it. And I, I wouldn't mind looking at that movement. I think that's, you know, pretty decent. I prefer an 8L personally. I like the 8L quite a bit, but here's the thing that I have to keep in perspective. And I think it would be wise if a lot of us tried to remember this. If we get a watch with every item on our wish list, great bracelet, screw links, you know, excellent case finishing and dial work and macro work and good anti-reflective treatment on a box sapphire crystal and good packaging. And we want a chronometer movement and we want an Adel movement and we want this and we want that. If we get everything on our wish list, it would be an awesome watch. It could be close to perfection, but what, what would the price be? It wouldn't be $1,700. It'd probably be like $3,700 or $4,700, depending on what we've asked for. So I try to keep that in perspective. Like, what do I really value? And what am I willing to pay? And what can I live with that's not a deal breaker? And when you find that happy medium, I think you can really bond with the watch long term and be happy with the retail price or whatever you pay for that watch. And so again, not the best movement. I'm glad I don't have to look at it, but uh, uh, kind of disappointing at the same time. And I think that's the biggest gripe with the watch. It's not necessarily the price. You know, I know a lot of watch enthusiasts, they buy Grand Seiko, they buy uh, Seiko Lux, they buy some higher priced Seiko watches. They spend two, three thousand dollars on a Marine Master or similar. It's not necessarily spending more. It's getting that satisfaction of what you think is good value with that watch. And so that made me think about, um, you know, what competitors would be uh, similar to this King Seiko that has good dial work, that has retro design language going back decades, that has a decent bracelet, that has good finishing, you know, that's midsize or smaller, you know, sub 40 millimeters. 
And there was one watch from one brand that really came to mind, and that was the Longines Heritage Sector Dial on the bracelet. That one is 38.5 millimeters, great dial work, great design history, 19 millimeter lug width, seemingly a very solid bracelet, uh, and not necessarily an in-house movement, but the fact that Swatch owns Longines and Etta, it's kind of an in-house movement. Uh, so, you know, I looked at that and I'm like, you know what, there's some similarities here in terms of where this fits in the market. What's the price on the Longines? It's $23.50 retail. And I believe with both, you're going to be able to negotiate a discount, uh, maybe not initially because of popularity, but over time, I'm sure, yeah, you could probably get a discount um, on both of these watches. So the fact that the King Seiko is $650 less at retail, is it $650 less of a watch? I don't think so. I guess time will tell. I do prefer the movement in the Longines, and maybe that's where some of that discrepancy in price uh, is portrayed there. A nicer movement, you're going to have to spend more for it. Uh, but I, it makes me think that that Seiko hasn't grossly mispriced this watch. They've just put the wrong movement in. Uh, in terms of us watch enthusiasts, what we like to see, I think everything else looks very promising and I can't wait to see one in person. Now, last thing before we close, if we look at the history of King Seiko, they were essentially a competitor to Grand Seiko. They were both owned by the same corporation, but they were you know, at odds with each other. They were competing with each other. They were um, doing that to foster an environment of innovation and create a better product for the market. And so again, they were competitors. They were at a similar price, similar specs, similar size, all of that stuff. And it's fun history, but I don't think that's the business model for today. The Seiko, Seiko Epsom Corporation, excuse me, they're not going to budget <laughs> a King Seiko to go up against a Grand Seiko in every instance. Maybe there's a one-off model here or there that will do it. But I think they want to fill the void in their uh, product catalog. So we have Seiko Sports. We have Presage that goes anywhere from, you know, around $500 on up to, you know, $1,500. But there's not much between that price and, say, an entry-level Grand Seiko. So in my opinion, and I hope I'm right, I have no inside information, but I hope Seiko brings back King Seiko to stay to be between Presage and in Grand Seiko. And then, of course, above Grand Seiko, you have Credor. So <laughs> I hope that's what happens. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Stay tuned for hopefully full in-depth reviews and comparisons of the new King Seiko. And tell me if you think there's a better competitor on the market uh, than the Longines Heritage Sector Dial. I wonder if I'm missing something. Uh, that's just the one that came to my mind. So again, thank you for watching today. I hope you guys have a great day and uh, see you next time.